Shut up and sit down. Hey, and welcome to the Free MMA Podcast, where it doesn't matter if you're a casual fan or a championship fighter. Join us in our discussion about the beautiful sport, which is mixed martial arts. Hello guys, and welcome to another episode of the Free MMA Podcast. And today we're speaking to Zoran Milic, who just done his uh, Pro MMA debut at Fight Club Rush 8. Uh, he's a bit of a fan favorite around uh, the Scandinavian area, also in Wales. And uh, obviously in his home country of Bosnia. He's a great character. Uh, check out his fights. He's a right, like, savage. And his secret is out now that he can speak perfect English. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here is Zoran Milic. Hello, Zoran. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Just finished work and uh, sitting in the car outside my place. Uh, you're a busy man, and thank you for the time uh, to talk to us, first of all. Thank you. All right, so uh, we're a few weeks away from your very impressive uh, pro debut at Fight Club Rush 8. How, do you, how did you feel about that win, first of all? Uh, great, man. I'm so proud of myself and all the hard work I've been doing. And uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm so happy. I can't wait to fight again, and we're already looking for new opponents and uh, new events. And uh, this fucking Corona, it's, uh, I don't know what. Uh, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little problem uh, now to find a new match. But uh, I hope uh, we will uh, fight soon again. So I was looking a bit over your amateur career, which uh, was a very extended one. Uh, you was the Swedish champion as well in, in amateur MMA. Is there any fighters from your amateur career that you would like to fight as a pro? Uh, uh, yes, the, the, there, there are many that went uh, pro now, so I would love to fight everybody. Yeah, that all would... of them. So uh, why not the two? Uh, how do you say? Uh, get uh, get my record and the ex- fight experience, and they're good guys. So it will be it will be nice to fight them. I would like to ask why you've been waiting until now to come out with this amazing English. I mean, you kept it all a secret from us, man. Yeah. Uh, man, I, have, I haven't been talking English with, I don't know. I, have, I haven't had a chance, but uh, I don't think it's that great. I, I, uh, it's okay. Uh, I, I give it an A+, plus, as, as I told you before. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we talk a bit about the that first pro fight. I mean, uh, round one, which was a bit of a dangerous one for you, and you was caught in a very deep armbar. Um, how did you survive that, Jose? Uh, I don't give up, man. I, I break it, take it to Finland. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I, I had a, a little bit of luck. It was like fifteen seconds left, so it was it was okay. Yeah, I have heard from your coach, uh, Jürgen Hamburg, that uh, you don't tap and you don't give up. Usually when you do get caught in, in the submissions during during training and sparring, you just will scream or kind of just kind of keep it. Is that true? Yes, because I think you get your mind weak if you, you get used to tap. and uh, So better don't tap. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm never really sure how much is true with uh, the training stories. Is it also true that you spar sometimes with middleweights like Andreas uh, Bain Gustafsson? Everybody. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Is it no? You don't care about weight difference there? I have never. I don't know. I, I. I don't. In my world, I don't see any difference. I. I think I can beat everybody. <laughs> so it's. Uh, they're just normal people. I know I'm good and I love to fight with everybody. So, so, so going into round two in your pro fight, did you feel a bit of urgency that you had to finish it then? Nah, no, I, I, but I knew that the, the fight will uh, not last all three rounds. Uh, but uh, I knew that, that I would finish him sooner or later. But uh, I... I, I saw that moment in my uh, in my mind before it even happened S- same thing with uh, my when i won the swedish championship i saw the same moment as like weeks before 
I'm just going to finish him like that. I thought, like, then it happened. And uh, I'm so glad that I have the opportunity to fight with elbows now. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, they're dangerous weapons. So I can cut people open. So it's good. That's so. What's your thoughts about the elbow situation with Swedish MMA? Do you know why they are a bit like scared of using them? I don't know. I, I think it's uh, really bad. I think we should start. To, we're pro pro fighters. So why why can I don't fight? Like uh, I must wait like four, three, four fights until I can throw elbows. That that that's more more. Uh, I think it's stupid mm -hmm. because uh, then I will uh, meet uh, people that are more experienced with elbows, and then I'm not uh, that good, you know. As uh, I think it's uh, bad. Did you think a lot of in the lead up to the event about the platform that you had? I mean, the fight was live on UFC Fight Pass. Did you think about that a lot? Uh, man, I, I didn't uh, understand how big it was. Uh, so uh, I don't know how big it is uh, today. I don't know how big it is, but uh, it's good that everybody can can see the fights and uh, give us opportunity to to show the people uh, how great Swedish MMA is and uh, all the um, fighters from Sweden. They they're much uh, they're great potential potential in uh, Swedish pro fighters. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you, one of your training uh, friends, Tobias Harilla, also in Cage Warriors with a great performance. How many killers are going to be coming out of that gym? Could you tell us? I hope more, but uh, until now, I hope it's only me and him that went pro from our uh, gym and Andre Andreas and Robin. So uh, I, I hope uh, more guys that are coming and turning pro, but they must keep up uh, the hard work. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, how has the pandemic been for you? I mean, I know that training has been very hard with most of the fighters. Is it the same with you? I mean, I know there are restrictions with how many people can be in the gym and things like that. Uh, no, uh, that's uh, no, nothing much have, have been changed. Me and Tobias uh, have trained a lot to, uh, together, so I, I don't need, need anybody. I just need him. Me and Tobias can do everything together. So. Uh, speaking about the platform that you had as well, I saw a few videos of, I, I guess they're your home fans. I'm not sure if it was your hometown or your home country. How did you home feel? Country in Bosnia, Herzegovina. What was your feeling from when you saw that? Uh, it was, I was so happy. I, I, looked, uh, I was watching that uh, uh, video, uh, video in, uh, at work when I was at the toilet. I, 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 uh, I was scrolling like uh, in my uh, photos, and uh, I saw that video. I was I was so happy. I, I, when I see my grandfather, he was uh, kissing the TV after I won. It was uh, I I just want to start cry crying, man. and I'm so glad that I uh, make them proud and happy. So I this gives me such uh, so much motivation and uh, fire in me. So just to keep going and. More is coming, so it's uh, it's it's great. It was in my uh, grandfather's uh, restaurant, okay. so everybody, uh, so everybody, my my friends, cousins uh, went there and uh, for support me, and the the whole town uh, was watching us. So they're like uh, two thousand people in that. Uh, it's like it's like a village. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful. I have the photo on my Instagram, so I, I'm so proud that I'm coming. From there, and uh, I went. I came to Sweden when I was 16, so I started one year after I, when I was like 17. I started uh, with uh, Thai boxing, and uh, then uh, after three years MMA. So everybody was, everybody was like, "Ah, quit that! That's not good. That's bad. Uh, it's not that good for you fighting." Uh, people don't like fighting in my my uh, ta little town. So when I and I get is. Uh, Paulo Flores. Oh yeah. Everybody, every everybody thinks it's like tumor or something, <laughs> and, and they think uh, oh, it's very ugly, ugly. Down there, everybody's look, looking at me like, uh, what the fuck. So, but now everybody's proud. So it, it gives me ah, uh, I'm 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 so proud that that they are proud of me. Yeah, I mean, so, 
Th um, there, there's a lot of uh, fighters coming from that region, shall I say, uh, of of countries. So, um, would you say that uh, that MMA is quite big there? Yes, it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Uh, in the whole world, man, it's. I think it will take over in in like, I don't maybe ten years, uh, like that. It will take over all the sports. Let's hope for this Corona stuff to go away, and then you'll be able to fight in your home country. That would be amazing. Uh, we are already looking like Serbia and Croatia now. Uh, maybe in May or something. So my manager is looking for fights. So I hope I can go uh, down in, in, in Serbia or Croatia or, or, or Bosnia. So uh, we're looking for a fight. And also, uh, you spoke about your Instagram there. And usually in your stories, I see a lot of uh, things about food. How much weight do you cut to get to your weight class, shall I, shall I ask? It seems like you're uh, a food lover. I love I love cooking and eating. So uh, I'm uh, now I'm 64 kilograms. I'm I, I always like 63 and a half, 64. So I cut down to 67.2. So it's like maybe seven like seven kilograms. Uh, that's not that much for for a profiler. Nah, it was it was a e easy weight cut. It was a easy easy weight cut. So oh. I look forward for the next one, so just to plan a little better, but... Oh. Yeah, are you looking to maybe fight in more than one weight class, like you've seen other fighters doing? Yeah, but but now I'm young, I'm 24, but when I get a little older, man, my body grows mm -hmm. more when I become a real man, then like in three years, maybe four. So when I was like, maybe, I don't, I don't rush. It's kind of crazy to think how young you are with, you know, how much of a savage you seem in the cage. I mean, <laughs> you seem like you know what you're doing there. Ah, it's good. It's good. I have a little bit of experience. Either. And I just enjoy, man. I love what I'm doing. And, uh, ah. and just a bit of a side note. I was speaking to uh, Ricky Wright earlier and I was talking about how many, how much fans you have in Wales. Can, can you talk to us a bit about some experience you've had there? I haven't been there, but I, 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 I it's all because of Ricky. He's, he's posting about me, and I love that guy, man. He's great, and I hope I can fight in uh, Wales and England, uh, everywhere. Man. I want to fight everywhere. Yeah, let's get it done. Uh, as we've seen, a lot of Swedes and Scandinavians going to Cage Warriors. Has that maybe been uh, one of the things on your mind as well? Yeah, why not? Uh, well, th that's also a good platform for me to grow and. Uh, I hope soon I can perform over there. So, uh, what has, I know it's a bit hard to say right now with the corona and everything, but what is your plan moving forward uh, with your MMA career? I'm, I'm looking for a fight, so if anybody wants to fight at fly, flyweight, I'm ready. And uh, uh, But I, I want to go like five to six pro fights this year, if it's possible. So I, I'm hungry. I have been off uh, for a little bit, ta little, little time. So now I, I want to get everything back. That sounds like an incredible plan, man. Yeah, I, I hope it will uh, go that way uh, with the fights. Mm -hmm. so. so we usually give uh, this time for our guests to give thanks to any family, friends, uh, sponsors, support or anything like that. So this will be your time to do that now. Th thank you, everybody. <laughs> Keep it short and sweet. Short, short, short one. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, everybody, for support. So, uh, All right. Thank you for your time, man. Uh, thank you. Uh, looking forward to speak with you again. This will be one with a uh, little short. I'm uh, in a hurry. So. Uh. All right. Thanks, man. Yes. Good to see you.